Hello everyone, how's it going? Vasco here from the Angular University. We're going to dive straight into the Angular Fire library, which is observables based. We're going to start by the first concept of the library, how to query lists in Firebase. It's coming right up. So far we have been using the Firebase SDK directly, using its Firebase TypeScript definitions. What we're going to do now is we are going to use the Angular Fire library instead in order to interact with Firebase. And we are going to see the advantages of doing so in a moment. First, let's just install the Angular Fire library. In order to use Angular Fire, we need to install the Angular Fire module in the imports of our application. So let's just do that. Let's just import it and we need to call initialize app and we need to pass it in the Firebase configuration that I have put here in an external file. So firebase.config.ts contains the configuration for accessing Firebase. With this, our Angular Fire module is installed. Let's now use the Angular Fire module to do our first query. What we are going to implement with Angular Fire is the equivalent of what you see here. So this is just a plain query to the courses node where we are going to print all the courses to the screen. We're going to implement the same thing with Angular Fire. So for that, let's simply inject here Angular Fire in the constructor of our class. We don't need to initialize the application anymore because it's already initialized. So let's just delete this. What we're going to do is we are going to use Angular Fire to query the courses node and retrieve its content. So take a look with TypeScript with auto completion. You can see here that the Angular Fire injectable has either a database or a off uh, property. So we can access the database we want to query the database even we have two options either list or object let's do list for the moment i'm going to explain the difference between both in a second so let's just query courses now what do we get back from this function call this is actually a firebase list observable so this is an observable let's assign it to a variable so let's call it courses and we're going to add a dollar at the end of it to mean that it's an observable. The type of this variable is implicit, but let's make it explicit just to confirm the actual type. So let's make it a Firebase and we have here list observable. So as you can see, there aren't any compilation errors. So this is the correct type that we are retrieving from the list call. Now, let's have a look at what we have here available in this type. So we have a series of methods that we will be using throughout the course. Right now, take a look. We have a subscribed method. This is indeed an observable. So let's subscribe to it and simply output its value to the screen to see what we get. Let's just do a console.log of the value and let's try it out. One thing to bear in mind is that the Firebase list observable is a generic type. So we need to pass in here. So it's an observable, but what is the value that the observable returns? And that is the meaning of the type. So for the moment, let's specify it as being any. Let's see what we get in the console. So if we refresh the application, we can see that we get here an array. So take a look, this is a list call. So it makes sense that it returns an array. So what are the elements of the array? Let's compare it to the content of the database. So the first element has a key. Take a look, it ends it with M underscore M underscore. So it's this course here, right? Angular 2 tutorial for beginners it does match the same course. And the second key is 4D, which corresponds to the second element of the array, which is the Angular 2 HTTP and services course. So notice that under the variable dollar key, we do have the value of the key of the list item that we just queried. And the other properties are the values. Now take a look at this, we're going to clear the console. Remember, we have subscribed to an observable. So what will happen if we modify anything under these node courses? Let's, for example, modify here the description of this course. Let's add a string to it. 
let's click enter we have received here in the console a new value so the subscription for that observable is not cancelled it's still active so any modification on the database we have here the new value that is available with the string test so the subscription is still active we are continuously receiving from the real-time database any new value if we do any modification to any node that is below courses let's do for example here a modification of the description of the second course this also triggers here a new value so we can see here again the string test but this time in the angular 2 http and services course so this is a very important notion with this we can see that the angular fire library is completely based around the notion of observables so the api calls return observables and we subscribe to them to get the contents of parts of the real-time database we are going to see that the observable api is really a great way of modeling a real-time database a real-time database can really be seen as simply a stream of values over time by the way one interesting thing what we are doing here is we're passing to the first argument of subscribe a function that takes as argument a value and console logs the value itself so what we need is a function with one argument that outputs the value to the screen this is actually equivalent to simply doing subscribe console.log so we are passing a reference to the console.log uh, function so this also works and it's a little bit simpler to read so as you can see observables are a really great api solution for interacting with something like a real-time database if we would be using promises they get resolved and they only return one value that is inherently not what we are looking for while interacting with a real-time database the real-time database we are interested in subscribing to it and receiving multiple values as they evolve over time we are going to see how to take only the first value if that's what we need for our application right now let's go to the second primitive of angular fire how to load objects it's coming right up